So today we're talking about ICAP, which is short for I Internal Capital Adequacy Assessment Process. And it's a, it's a term that is very often used in risk management in banks, but not a lot of people actually understand in the beginning what it means. Um, so what I've done in, in a lot of other videos, I've talked about how risk management actually works. So what the theory or the content is behind risk management, right? And this is what this block is about, right? So we said that risk management is all about balancing risk and equity and that the risk of the bank is made up of certain risk types, for instance, credit risk, market risk, and so on. But of course, there's also a process behind all this theory, and this is what ICAB is all about. So I have all this theory, but I actually need to do stuff on a day-to-day -day basis, and this is what ICAB is about. It's the process of risk management in a bank. Yeah? And ICAB has a lot of pillars or a lot of things that need to be done on a regular basis. The first one is the risk inventory. Right? So we need to understand which risks are relevant to my bank. And I've done a separate video on risk inventory. The risk inventory is done once a year. So it's a yearly process. I need to do a risk strategy and a risk appetite statement. This is also a yearly process and I will do a separate video on this. I also need to do reporting. Reporting just means that I communicate the results that I obtain within my risk management. So if I see a problem in credit risks, then I need to report this to the people who actually make, can make decisions and can counter the risk, right? And there's, also, there's, of course, daily reporting, there's quarterly reporting, and there's also yearly reporting, right? And all of those reports are more or less comprehensive and more or less detailed. And another important pillar of the ICAP is stress testing. And I will make a separate video on this blog also, but stress testing basically means that I look at future adverse scenarios and I, and I think about whether my bank is ready to counter future adverse scenarios. And I briefly want to mention that the European Central Bank or the Banking Authority is very, very thorough on ICAB. And there's this one important publication from the European Central Bank, which is from November 2018. It's called the ECB Guide to the Internal Capital Adequacy Assessment Process. And this is um, the central document where the ECB lays out how banks should do their ICAB. And this document has seven principles. And I don't want to go over all of them, but I just want to pick out two. So principle four says all material risks are identified and taken into account in the ICAP. And this means that I need to do a thorough risk inventory. So I need to understand all risks which are material to my institution and I also need to monitor them. Yeah. So you can say, oh, this real estate risks, this is important to my bank, but I don't have any tools or people to monitor those. And for instance, part of principle six, ICAP risk quantification methodologies are adequate, consistent, in independently validated. What this means, the last term here, independently validated, is that banks need to have separate units. So they need to have one unit which actually builds the models and one unit which actually validates the models. So that you have two people which challenge themselves on the risk models. This is just to ensure that no one is cheating or building a bad model. Yeah? So you need to have an independent unit. This is part of principle six. Yeah. So the ICAP is a very important process and ICAP is basically the overarching term for the risk management process in a bank.